Let me just loot the Vandross for you. Oh! We got Michael Gabriel on the pan. Woo! Yeah. the Gladstone Gallery. We're going to look at an Amy Selman show titled To Be Other Wise. Now we'll take a little glimpse of the video. Amy Selman 2024. Sound by Marina Rosenfeld. I came in here yesterday. I had about 20 minutes to go before the show closed and there were a bunch of people here, so I decided I would come back. And uh, this is actually the art fair weekend. Or, one of the art fair weekends here in New York. They've got the Freeze Art Fair up at uh, Hudson Yard. I think they've got the Independent, maybe Nada. A couple of other smaller fairs, which is nice because uh, it means the galleries are bringing out all their big guns to uh, catch the out of town visitors. Well, even though I <laughs> tried to schedule it so that I would have more time, I'm still down to about half an hour, so we're gonna kind of rough cut run through this. It's titled Ravina 2024 Acrylic and Oil on Linen 75 by 66 inches. We've been looking at Amy's work for many years. I believe she's a Williamsburg artist. I think somewhere up in northern Williamsburg or maybe Greenpoint. And uh, I believe she teaches somewhere too. And I know that she showed with Brett Sykema for several years. This is a tragic story. I mean, the Brett part is. And I think one of the uh, reasons that Amy has been getting a lot of attention for, gosh, maybe 15 years now, is the way that she kind of melds a formalist abstraction, coloristic abstraction with certain kinds of odd figuration and I think the uh, intriguing part of it is that usually neither one of those two um, ideological aesthetics kind of overwhelms the other one so you're always kind of floating around wondering what exactly it is you're looking at. It's titled Little Instrument 
2023. I was thinking that she's got basically two sizes of paintings in the show. These larger pieces are about let's say 75 by 66, so we're talking six feet and a couple of inches by five and a half feet. I like this one. I love the, uh, the striping. It really gives you a chance to play with the colors. Uh, and then, uh, this is one of the larger pieces. This is afternoon 2024. This is acrylic on linen, 75 by 66. So she's got a couple of these here. And as I said, she melds these kind of figurative elements. But there's also some uh, interesting art historical references. So of course you've got uh, Matisse's, I don't know, they call it Red Nude. It's one of his very famous nude figures. It's kind of referenced here. I think uh, being a painter and uh, having just come from the studio and being smushing paint around, I like to take a little time and try to think about, kind of forensically think about the uh, the brush strokes and the strange effects that Amy gets. You know, a lot of this is, uh, well, fat, flat brushes, palette knives, squeegees. So I think this is another version of, well, this is titled Little Elephant. Anyway, I was telling you to note the uh, various surface treatments. I was talking to some friends yesterday. I said, what have you seen? They were both painters saying, well, we saw six painting shows. And I said, that's great. I said, yeah, there was a lot of slathering, scraping, scribbling, gouging, pushing, sanding, and uh, I think a lot of Amy's work has got all of that stuff in there. This is Ghost. Well, I was talking about the, the dialectic of the figurative versus the abstract. And maybe part of the strategy is that you're looking at these and you're sort of wondering what am I gonna, you know, what's gonna drift up? What kind of mental image is gonna drift up? Is it gonna be figurative or abstract? Oh, and she's got something in there, some kind of a, uh, that collage element or something, what do they say? Acrylic and oil on linen. So that could be some kind of solvent transfer thing. I also think that uh, Amy might be using some oil sticks. Uh, And also see that a lot of this is um, pretty flat. I mean, matte. So she may be uh, scraping things down and maybe washing them with solvents. It's titled Summer 1 2023 Acrylic and Ink Oil Crayon on Paper. 31 by 22. Well, when we go into the, uh, the main gallery, we'll take a look at a wall full of, I would call them works on paper. I guess maybe some people are calling them drawings. And we can talk about how you would distinguish those. I think this might be one of my favorite pieces in the show. This is titled, Old Coringa Albatross 2 2024 Acrylic and Oil on Linen 75 by 66. OK, 
Okay, so you could look at the top part of this and just think that this is kind of a slashy action painting, or like Franz Klein, but then we've got these uh, you know, goofy orange feet sticking out of the bottom. And then you kind of sit back and say, oh no, there's some, some kind of figure. Maybe we've got some hands in there. stuff. I just like the uh, palette spectrum in this. When we uh, look at some of the other pieces, particularly the pieces on paper, uh, you'll see some of the strange, whether they're transfers, prints. Okay, this is the wall I was talking about. Well, we're gonna follow the guide just to simplify our tour. It's titled O'Clock 2023 Acrylic and Oil on Linen 59 by 55. Okay, so this is kind of a, an in-between size. Uh, I've been talking a bit recently in some of our visits about how there are a lot of popular um, well-recognized and successful artists that are using extremely large-scale formats. For instance, we uh, visited a Danish shoot show and I think like the average size painting was 8 by 10 feet and 8 by 11, something like that. We saw a Joe Bradley show which had a lot of paintings that were again 10 by 12, 12 by 18, something like that. Okay, so some of this I am thinking might be, maybe not, might be oil stick. Um, maybe she also uh, applies some of this with some kind of funky roller, so you got like a, an ink roller that you might use if you were doing some prints, you could kind of get an irregular layer of ink in there and then roll that around there to give you some interesting variegations. Almost blue. This is probably has the least blue of any of the paintings in the show. This is 59 by 55. Okay, so that's about a Five foot square. I think that's interesting because uh, Ed Reinhardt's last series of, well, I call them black paintings and people come in and correct me and say, well, they're not black, they're an infinite number of shades of dark gray. Speaking of gray, this has got a lot of nice kind of grays and uh, khakis and beiges and other shades of gray. She probably has some 12 inch brushes. And I kind of like the uh, faded, painted over gray sections. And then you've got a couple of nice shots of color in vermilion. A 
acrylic and oil on linen over panel. Well, as I said, we've been watching Amy's work for a while. You could probably, maybe I'll post them at the bottom of the description. Some of her other shows that we've seen. Okay, so that's very nice. These kind of milky washes. And, uh... Yeah, you'll have a chance to maybe compare some of this new work with some of the stuff from 15 years ago, 12 years ago. Okay, this is actually like a wall of the, these are the, more the blue paintings. Blue, aqua blue. It's titled Clown. 2023, 20. 24, 75 by 66. Well, as I say, I've been looking at her work for a long time and I've been just in general looking at a lot of paintings for a long time and uh, it kind of makes me think of, I saw a movie called Samoliniere, which was about um, young wine experts taking these training courses in how to be a specialist in wine, but you would have to learn how to identify all the various, well, areas, varietal types, uh, even like the, the mineral content of the soil that this was all done in because of the flavors. And in a certain way, if you've been looking at paintings for a long time, you can see there are certain things that resonate like a flavor. And in some ways I'm thinking some of these things make me think of um, Picasso still lives from the 1930s, something like that. Other parts have other tangs flavors. Okay, that's the white stripes would be something that might make me think about oil stick. Oh, this is a popular opening. It's titled Harpy. Twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four acrylic and oil on linen. And again, well, we've got a lot of blue, but I really like the uh, the work with the stripes. And uh, okay, so that's kind of nice. The little the little stripes with the the crescents in there. Maybe she was. Painting them with some kind of, oh, I got it. A little brush and she would just keep scooting back up a little bit. Anyway. So I like the stripes. I like the, the skidding, the scraping, the gouging, the drawing. Thinking blue stripes, you can't go wrong. So this is titled Clown as well. It's also kind of getting a little flashback to a show that we saw. Well, at this point, it's got to be maybe a eight or nine months ago, a John Walker show down on uh, the Lower East Side. But again, here we've got our kind of obscured figure element. We've got what could be a hand reaching out there. Okay, so we've got our fingernails. And a lot of these linear elements have been scraped in.
clownette. Okay, so I, I'm noting a theme of this one of the series is based on the clowns, maybe. Uh, Back when I was a young artist, uh, of course you're out there trolling the the marketplace or something for something that someone would commission a work by. And um, well, Kate's mother was a ran a little gallery and also was kind of a, an art consultant, and she would have people that were interior designers come to her and recommend things. And I remember. We were saying, gee, could we do some commissions? And they said, okay, here the, here's the thing. No skulls, no Buddhas, and no clowns. I'm <laughs> thinking, that's, that's about 90% of all the shows I go to these days. But, uh, yeah. and again, I think that this is kind of one of those pieces that I guess there could be certain kinds of figurative elements, but mostly it just comes off as kind of abstract Albatross 1 it's 2024 20, 75 by 66 well, I was talking about getting kind of a um, an echo an echo of Picasso and some of these I'm also getting well, more than an echo it's a pretty blatant reference to Matisse So like the way that um, Amy does have a very uh, solid draftsman, draftsperson sense. You know, she knows how to use line. Could be black lines, could be colored lines, but she knows how to do a use a a good line to structure your composition. NBFF This is 36 by 30 acrylic and oil on linen over panel Yeah, there are parts of this where I'm really wondering about the the process, I know she does a lot of kind of interesting and unique technical things. We're talking about the rinsing, the scraping, the sanding, and I'm wondering if she does um, mono prints and then kind of mushes those, or at least the ink residue from some of those onto the paintings. The banana tree. This is 2023, 75 by 66. It's also uh, noting that they have uh, reconfigured the gallery for this show, or maybe they just have done the entire gallery over to kind of uh, give you a larger main gallery area. So I was talking about the abstraction versus the figuration and some of the, I guess the figuration you would call, does kind of relate to landscape. 
Somehow this makes me think of a uh, Brooklyn backyard in the sunset. We've got our little rails coming down off the fire escapes. There's a lot of uh, transparency. Gosh, I think that's B. Wirtz. This is titled UGH, UGH, 2023. Torsos and words, acrylic and ink on paper. I think I was in here the other day and figured that there was something in the neighborhood of 70 of these drawings here. Also, I think it's interesting that uh, Amy has put some text in there. Okay, there's the UG. Well, as uh, someone that likes to draw myself and also was involved in printmaking for quite a while and love collage, uh, say Amy has got somebody that is supplying her with this paper that is beautiful. It looks like handmade super deckled edges. I don't know whether that's linen paper or... I was talking about the, uh, the strange areas in the way that there is a kind of a interesting treatment of the, of the areas. I guess Amy would be like any typical alchemist in that you could ask her all the questions you want, but she's not going to tell you what the secret magical uh, ingredient or technique is. I don't know, maybe. And then there's something that's been laid in there, laid on there, the pattern part. And this is also a very simple palette, mostly just reds, deep magentas, some pinks, grays, and black and white. A couple of little shots of green here and there. And I guess that each one of those sheets is thirty-two by twenty-seven, something like that. 22 by 32, something. That's the standard print size. This has been James Kahn reporting on Amy Silman. To be otherwise, here at the Gladstone Gallery in Chelsea, you can like this, share, link it up on all your social media sites. You can talk about it, recommend it to your friends, and you can subscribe. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. And as always in our 18th year here, we're only going to ask you to say thank you, Kate. Fantastic. Thank you. That was great.